Pourriez-vous comprendre cette émission si c'était dans une autre langue? Of maakt het niet uit, want vele mensen denken dat Engels een wel taal is. Well, a report by the European Commission suggests that businesses are losing out because of language barriers. So should we be doing more to make sure we can all communicate better? Well, joining us to discuss the issues is Labour's education spokesman and London MEP Mary Honeyball. And Sean Murray from the British Chamber of Commerce here in Belgium. Mary, let me turn to you first. Um, you've just come to the studio from a French lesson. Um, uh, you said recently on your blog that us British are rather hopeless when it comes to languages. That's a bit unfair, isn't it? It might be unfair, but it's absolutely true. I believe that foreign languages have been reinstated now in the national curriculum, but there were a few years when children did not have to learn a language at all and I think that was dreadful and it very much shows in the European Parliament every other nationality except perhaps the Irish who have a similar problem speak at least one other language an awful lot of my colleagues speak two foreign languages absolutely fluently and we are we really are hopeless and I, I would stand by that and Sean Murray, I mean, how much of a problem do you think this is for, for Britain's businesses? The Federation of Small Businesses estimates that only 5% of its members get any revenue from abroad at all. So how big a barrier is, is language in all that? Well, I think it's, uh, I think it's a significant barrier. And essentially, if you're looking to sell a product um, to someone abroad and you can communicate in their language and make the customer feel at ease communicating in their language rather than them having to struggle to deal with you in English then you're increasing your um, potential for making a sale exponentially in my view. I mean what do you make of this European Commission uh, statistic that says that you know more than one in ten companies would be losing out on contracts because of a lack of language skills I mean is that something that your members are telling you as well? Yes I, I, th I think so I think um, a lot of people in British companies um, are very aware, um, like Mary has said, of the fact that the lack of languages is a barrier to um, being a successful business and being successful working abroad. I think that the realisation is there. The question is quite often how much is being done to really address the problem, um, both at the education level and within businesses themselves. Mary, you, you criticised um, uh, the French press when they were pressurising Baroness Ashton into, into learning that kind of extra level of French. The fact that she got that far without having perfect French, doesn't that say that maybe we don't need languages quite as much as we like to think? Well, I'm not sure about that. I mean, we are in the very fortunate position that English is the international language, and you very much notice it here. Everybody does speak English, but that really isn't good enough. And if you want to conduct business in another country or any kind of sensible foreign policy, really, you do need a facility in other people's languages. And Sean, I mean, do you think as well perhaps our thinking about which languages to learn is a bit outdated? I mean, should we be not thinking anymore in terms of the, the, the European languages, but perhaps now Arabic or, or Mandarin? Do you think that needs to change as well? I would, I would think so. The world's dramatically different uh, from 20 years ago. Um, short, as short a period as that in terms of the languages that really matter for business. Um, India, China those in the next 20 years are liable to be industrial powerhouses so um, the sooner that uh, the sooner that uh, British business gets to grips with those languages as well the better although I must say I'm a bit biased because I, I taught French and German myself so I wouldn't say that we should ditch French and German altogether. And in fact, I measure as a teacher, it was quite a challenge to get that kind of those languages across. Uh, even harder if it's uh, uh, languages that have no relation to, to English at all, non-European languages, in other words. I remember trying to convince a farmer's son to learn German. And he said to me, well, I'm going to be driving my dad's tractor for a living, so why do I need it? And fair enough. But for people who are working in business, and for people who are looking to um, extend their influence and their connections, then the ability to do that internationally is an incredible plus. I, if I get a CV from someone these days, 
I don't look at the qualification. I look at the languages. If they've got English mother tongue, and if they can have another two fluent languages, then I'm interested. And Mary, I mean, how do you think we can address this problem? What kind of ideas can we be looking at to try and get more young people to, to learn languages? Well, the EU does have a policy that every member state should teach two languages, two foreign languages, in addition to the mother tongue, which we actually don't do. We don't comply with that. Mm. So I think that should be a starting point. We should actually keep pointing out to the government, and the education secretary, that this is what we should be doing. I think we could do more to get children and young people interested. We could tell them more about other countries, not just Europe, but as we were talking about other countries, China, India, the rest of the world, so that they're becomes a curiosity and a desire to learn other languages. So I think it's a mixture of both. It's a mixture of stick and a carrot. There's quite a nice idea from the uh, Federation of Small Businesses, uh, Sean. They want to encourage unemployed graduates with language skills to take internships with companies and therefore help those companies improve their own languages and, and therefore trade, I suppose, abroad. Does that sound like an idea, particularly in a recession, that might be a, a boost? I think so. Um, that sounds. I, I think we've really got to take whatever opportunities there may be um, to boost um, the awareness of the importance of language um, in small businesses, in large businesses. And um, as Mary said, it's a, it's, there's a number of different measures that are going to be required to do this. There's no. There's no um, there's no one easy solution and something like that which can be a benefit to people who are looking for an opportunity but can also provide a uh, maybe open the eyes and help uh, businesses would be very welcome. Mary, is, is there more that the EU can do? I mean, the European Commission says that through its lifelong learning programme, there's 50 million euros available. That sounds a little bit like a drop in the ocean if you spread that across the, the member states of the EU. Can the European Union do more to, to help, do you think? Unfortunately, that is a drop in the ocean. And it's not just a question of money. I think it's a question, in the UK certainly, of changing the culture, of actually beginning to realise that languages are a necessity and that we should do much, much more. It, they are, as Sean has said, for, for business and absolutely, absolutely essential. But there's also a, a wider point about our understanding of the world and our culture and understanding other people's culture. I mean, it really is actually a joy when you are able to visit other countries and talk in their own language, read their own publications, listen to their own television programmes even. And if you can't understand the language, you miss out on all of that. And it's a real shame. Well, we're going to have to leave this language discussion there. Thanks very much, both of you, for Thanks. joining us. Thanks very much.